Hello, my name is Madison Long. My senior thesis and the title of my presentation is Monarchs and Milkweed Predicting Which Milkweed Species Monarchs Prefer. Monarch butterflies are currently listed as an endangered species due to the recent population decline in the United States. This decline is due to the habitat loss and destruction of milkweed. Milkweed is the primary plant used for breeding grounds for monarchs to lay eggs and food for larvae to mature. Monarchs are attracted to the sweet nectars and vibrant colors of milkweed, which makes them an ideal breeding species for breeding purposes. The caterpillars of monarchs use the leaves for food and store secondary metabolites from the leaves as a defense mechanism against birds. Milkweeds are the only plants capable of meeting all of these needs. Monarchs migrate every year when the temperatures start to increase in the United States. When monarchs migrate, they depend heavily on milkweed because it's the only plant genus that monarchs use for breeding. If there's not enough milkweed available, the monarchs will not be able to replenish the current population and produce viable offspring. However, not all species of milkweed are equally beneficial to monarchs. By discovering the traits and defenses of milkweed species, this will help understand which species of milkweed is the most beneficial in the repopulation of monarchs. Knowing which milkweed species attract and benefit monarchs will help in guiding conservation by focusing on planting efforts on specific milkweed species. My thesis is to analyze physical traits and chemical defense mechanisms of many milkweed species to determine how they affect monarch preference. My hypothesis for this analysis is that physical traits will have a stronger preference among monarchs while using milkweed species. I first started by conducting a literature search through ProCrest Science Direct and Google Scholar to find articles and papers referencing the relationship between any milkweed species and monarch butterflies. I searched words like Asclebus, Monarchs, Preference, and Performance. Papers were included in my analysis if it discussed whether one or more milkweed species was used by monarchs for oviposition, as food for caterpillars, or as a source of nectar via pollination. Then I rate monarch preference for the milkweed species discussed based on a range of 1 to 3. 1 means that monarchs did not interact with the milkweed species. 3 indicated that the monarchs had a strong preference for a specific milkweed species. And a score of 2 indicated monarchs would use the milkweed species, but they would love to use a ranked 3 milkweed species if it was available. This ranking was done for 3 stages of the monarch life cycle, oviposition, caterpillar, and adult pollinator. In total preference data for 16 milkweed species were included in this analysis. In order to discover which traits of milkweed species contributed to interactions with the preference by monarchs, I chose both physical and chemical traits that are known to affect other insect species. I found data on plant height, flower size, distribution, leaf size, leaf shape, and flower color for each milkweed species. For plant chemical properties, I used a paper by Agrol et al. This paper included information on leaf cardinolites, total phenolics, chimeric acid derivatives, cathaic acid derivatives, flavonoids, quercetin glycoids, number of phenolic compounds for each milkweed species. The data was collected from 16 different milkweed species that have different characteristics regarding physical traits. Here are four physically different milkweeds. So the top left picture is a Sclebius exalta. The flowers of this plant is primarily white with a hint of pink. They're fairly tall in height with an average height of 11.5 decimeters. They're found in the east of the United States. The bottom left picture is the Sclebius syriaca. This plant is known for its purple flowers and very tall stature. It grows around 15 decimeters. These plants are found in every region of the United States. The top right picture is the Sclebius incarnata. And this plant is known for its vibrant pink flowers. Overall, this flower has a short stature compared to others at 7.5 decimeters, and it's usually found all over the United States. The bottom left picture is the Sclebius tuberosa. This flower is primarily known for its bright orange flowers, and this plant also has a relatively short stature, which is about 5 decimeters, and this plant is found mostly in the eastern United States. To see which variables were most important for each monarch life cycle, we used a model selection analysis. We ran a stepwise model selection using STEP and R. The stepwise model selection 
took the dependent variables of opposition, caterpillar, and pollination, and were analyzed regarding the independent variables, which are the plant traits and defenses. Plant traits and chemical defenses used in the analysis was height, flower size, leaf size, leaf cardinalides, total phenolics, numeric acid derivatives, caffeic acid derivatives, flavisoids, corsaric glycosides, number of phenolic compounds, and we ran three model selection analysis, one for each life stage. We ran both backward and forward stepwise models to determine which model was best at explaining monarch preference for each life stage. In all the cases, the backwards model selection gave a lower AIC, and therefore a bottle better model fit compared to the forward model. And therefore, the backward step models, stepwise model selection in the only analysis presented here. To help visualize my model results, we ran a principal component analysis, also known as a PCA, for each monarch life stage using the explanatory valuable variables that were included in the significant model. So first off, I'm going to explain um, my graph to give a little better give a little bit of a better understanding because initially looking at the graph it can be very confusing so the traits included in each of the models were were slightly different from the original list based off of the data that was available so each graph presents contains different variables which are significant to the specific model which i will point out for each one so this Significant model list has less variables because it's used as a principal component analysis, which is a type of multivariate analysis that condenses multiple variables down to fewer variables in order to help visualize model trends. Each graph contains multiple axes, and each axis is a composite of multiple variables so that we can view all the variables in one graph. The red arrows represent the different variables in the model along with their trends. The different shapes with numbers represents the preference of monarchs, so the blue circle with the number 1 represents no preference. The yellow triangle with the number 2 represents a slight preference. And the green squares with the number 3 represents a very high preference. So now this graph is a backward step model selection for overposition. So this model found that the best fit model included flower size, plant height, leaf cardinalides, flavonoids, caffeic acid, chimeric acid derivatives, and total phenolics. However, even the best fit model did not significantly explain the overposition preference, given that our p-value was 0.1361, and then our error squared value was 0.3731. So this suggests that the plant traits included here are not strongly related to overposition preference, and a trait or defense that we did not specifically analyze is probably the explanation. So the seven plant traits from the best fit model were included in the PCA, with the first two principal components explaining 61% of the variation. Monarchs had the strongest preference for taller plants with smaller flowers, and fewer flavonoids and chimeric acid derivatives for overposition purposes. This indicated through the clumping of higher preferences of twos and threes that correlated with height, flavonoids, flower size, and chimeric acid derivative arrows. However, there's, this pattern is not strong since the stepwise model was not significant. So the model selection for caterpillar preference found a best fit model that included number of phenolic compounds, flower size, leaf length, leaf cardinalides, cortisone glycosides, total phenolics, flavonoids, caffeic acid derivatives, and chimeric acid derivatives. So this model did significantly explain caterpillar preference given that our p-value is 0.03 and our r-squared value is 0.71. So this model so explains approximately 71% of the variation in caterpillar preference. The seven plant traits from the best fit model were included in the PCA and were the first two principal components explains 54% of the variation in these variables. Therefore, monarchs had a weak preference for milkweed species that were shorter in height and small in flower size, and the chemical defenses were important for determining whether monarchs will tolerate or prefer certain milkweed species. Monarchs had a stronger preference for taller plants, larger flowers, more phenolics, and caffeic acid derivatives. The milkweed species that contained these components were highly preferred by monarchs during multiple life stages. For the pollination preference, the model selection found that the best fit model included plant height, total phenolics, leaf length, caffeic acid derivatives, 
Cumeric acid derivatives, leaf cardinalides, and a number of phenolic compounds along with flower size. So this model significantly explained pollinator preference variation since our p-value was 0.008 and our r-squared value was 0.82. And this explains 82% of the variation in pollinator preference. The seven plate, tra plate traits from this best fit model were included in the PCA, and the first two principal components explaining over 50% of the variation in these variables. Monarchs had the strongest preference for taller plants with larger flowers and with higher total phenolics and caffeic acid derivatives for pollination purposes. Therefore, monarchs had a weaker preference for milkweed species with higher leaf cardinalides and other chemical defenses, as well as shorter plant height and smaller flowers. So, since the caterpillar and pollinator results are very similar, this indicates a strong correlation and preference among monarchs. Physical traits such as plant height and flower size play a huge role in preference among monkweed species. This is largely due to the surface area needed to, for caterpillars to thrive and the nectar's initial attraction and height of the plant for pollinators. Monarch preference physical traits such as plant height and flower size during pollination, which gives explanation to our data. This evidence is consistent with our data and thoroughly explains how certain physical traits showed a significant preference for monarchs in certain milkweed species. The OVA position model explained approximately 30% of the variation, which is not statistically significant. The caterpillar and pollination models explained approximately 70% and 82% respectively of the variation. Therefore, the caterpillar and pollination models were statistically significant and better model fits compared to the OVA position model. And therefore, my hypothesis was incorrect, based on the data and results present. However, the purpose of this research is very beneficial in narrowing down traits that monarchs preference in certain milkweed species. Overposition was unclear. Therefore, a chemical or physical trait is most likely the explanation for preference of overposition, which we did not yet analyze. Based on this analysis, taller and larger plants with more total phenolics, caffeic acid derivatives, and less leaf cardinalides are preferred by monarchs during caterpillar and pollination stages. In efforts to restore milkweed populations, milkweed species that favor these attributes are more likely to succeed in the attraction of monarchs through multiple life stages. So why care? The population of monarchs is declining at rapid rates due to the decline of milkweed that is available, which is evident in this graph. The only way to help restore the population of milkweed is to help with restoration factors, such as replanting. If the future generations want to be able to witness the beautiful butterflies, then conservation efforts will need to be implemented. And this research is just the beginning in helping restoring milkweed and monarch populations. A special thank you. I would like to give a special thank you to Dr. Soper Gordon for all of her help and guidance through all of my research. And please contact me via email if you have any questions with my research or my SLAM presentation. And thank you all for watching my SLAM presentation.